Hey guys, welcome to today's video and what we're going to be talking about today is how people actually go the wrong way about discovering their goals, their values and things that they should be pursuing. Now, let me kind of give you a heads up. Uh, this video is going to contain some foul language uh, because there are parts where I'll have to be a bit vulgar and the video is already, I already know that the video is probably going to get demonetized for it. So just so you know that I'm genuinely uh, here to help. So how do people currently um, set their goals? Like what do people actually do when they want to set goals? So the way most people go about it is they try to focus on the positive. So they ask themselves questions like, uh, for example, uh, what would make me happy? Uh, you, you know these kind of people? What would make me happy? What, what, what thing can I pursue that would make me happy? Or uh, other types of people uh, ask themselves, what are my goals? Or the worst one is that I know is, what do I want? Uh, basically, people really, really try to focus on the positive. Um, again, what do I want? What would make me happy? What would be cool? What would be fulfilling? Uh, basically, just really strong focus on the positive. And obviously, when you think this way, then uh, what are the things that are going to come to mind? Say, oh, I want, uh, I want to have this uh, brand new car. Yeah, and this is my uh, my uh, version of a car, by the way. I want to have a house, you know, or I want to have a successful business. You know, I want to make lots and lots of money. You know, I just want money flowing into my pockets. Or, you know, I want to be a, a famous public speaker. I just want to stand there and give lectures to millions of people or have a massive YouTube channel and everybody's going to love me. And it's always very much on the positive side. Now, where does that really uh, end up going bad? The answer is that when you set a goal, and it doesn't matter if it's a really huge goal or even just a, a medium-sized goal. Whenever you set goals in life, the way that usually works is uh, if this is the point where you start, you know, when we set goals, we think, okay, it's going to go like this. And I, I know this is kind of a cliche. I know everybody's like, yeah, yeah, I know. You know, it doesn't go like this. It goes like this. That's how they show it in the picture. I know that's not what I'm going to tell you. So please focus. The way we think it's go that it's gonna go is like and not like this because nobody's you know I won't say nobody's that stupid but we usually grow out of it by age twenty uh, but we do think it's gonna be like maybe I, I'm gonna ping in a wall here and then I'm gonna ping in this wall here and there's gonna be another one here and maybe one last wall here and then I'm gonna reach my goal so we severely underestimate just how biased we are towards optimism when we set our goals and then what happens is we do end up in that first wall we do end up in that second wall we do end up in that third wall uh, but which we were prepared for but then what we found that find out is that uh, what we thought was like a long way forward we find out that we actually just went like this like this, like this, and like this, and we're basically uh, maybe 10% of the way through. You know, if you like uh, Grant Cardone's 10x rule, he basically says that you need to assume that whatever you think it's gonna take, it's gonna take 10 times more than that. So, and the guy's almost a billionaire at this point, so just to give you an estimate of like how much shit you're gonna have to go through. And unfortunately, this is where we uh, start to go into profanity. So, uh, now that we realize that goals are shit uh, that anything you want in life that is worth going for is going to be shit how do you actually uh, go about finding out what you want uh, and doing it in a way where there's very low chances that you're going to be wrong so the answer is very simple focus on the negatives so when I set goals for myself or I want to clarify, okay, what's the right next move for me? What do I want to do in this situation? Um, what goals should I be striving for? I ask myself, instead of the fun questions like, oh, what would be awesome? I try asking myself actually like the worst kind of questions you can think of. So I'd ask myself something uh, along the lines, uh, sorry, something along the lines of um, what would I be willing to to suffer like fucking hell for you know or questions like what sorry let me just enlarge that uh, what would 
I rather die miserably uh, than not accomplish. So just as a small uh, exa two examples of the way that I kind of speak to myself when I uh, set up these kind of questions or uh, what goal would I set if I knew that I'd be forced forced to follow it through uh, despite how horrible and painful it would be. So what these kind of questions do, uh, what I like about them is that they don't engage your negative, your positive biases. So they don't make you go all optimistic and all like, oh, this is going to be fun. You know, uh, the, the reward is so awesome. Because the thing is, when you want to accomplish a goal, um, when you're basically very comfortable when you set that goal. You're usually in your living room or in an office that's air, air conditioned and things are just nice. You know, you maybe you're watching a, an inspirational video. Things just feel really, really good. So the way that the, the chart kind of looks, um, if we kind of map out, let's say the, let's say that here is the goal. Like if you reach here, uh, you achieve the goal and we are gonna use uh, two parameters. So one is time. So what I mean is like the axis of, of time, like how, how much time went by um, in regards to this goal. Let me just organize it. So how much time passed? And the other variable would be, uh, let's say, shit. So that, that kind of encapsulates, I think, uh, what I mean here. So, um, you know, and, and we, can even, we can even put at the top, like, amazing, you know, because like you want to put like a spectrum like okay at the top you feel amazing at the bottom you feel like shit and what people think the way they believe that this looks like is basically you start a goal it's kind of shit at the beginning and then things just get better and better and better over time and you're going to be happy and uh what event what ends up happening is because when you start your goal you're usually inspired you feel really good is you start it at a very high emotional level and you feel really good about starting it and you tell your friends about it and you get really really excited and then from the moment you start maybe there's a somewhat of a of, of a um an improvement in your mood because you get like a first win or something but then from there you get the what seth godin calls the dip and from there things just start spiraling down and you find out that the baseline you thought it was like somewhere around here no it's actually somewhere around here and you aren't used you aren't thinking about that you're thinking about that so you're not used to that you're not you're not you, you haven't prepared for it and it catches you off guard and that's really really bad that's one of the biggest reasons people give up on their goals is because they didn't expect it to be so hard and it just happens again and again and again and they, they eventually instead of saying okay maybe i need to readjust my thoughts about how hard it is to accomplish goals they say oh maybe i just should stop setting goals because setting goals doesn't work or something so what i like to do is to find ways creative ways to start as low as freaking possible uh, again these are great questions for that um, and then when I ask myself, like, what goal would I set if I knew that I'd be forced to follow it through despite how horrible and painful it would be? So now when I'm thinking about different goals, so, um, you know, I'm basically going through goals in my head. I'm saying, okay, I can do this thing. Uh, I can do that thing. Let's say, okay, I can go for public speaking. I can go for writing a book. I can start a consulting business. I can start an e-commerce business. I can uh, pursue that woman, this woman. By the way, I'm married with a two-month-old daughter, uh, <laughs> so I'm not pursuing women. Um, basically, you you ask yourself, you, you start asking about these goals, but instead of coming from a place of like, which one is more awesome? You start asking yourself, you, you start coming from a place of like, which one would I be willing to suffer for? And you actually look at all the shit that's probably going to happen along the way. Because again, the defining question here is like despite or forced. These are like the words that really change the essence of the questions because you're basically not letting yourself out of the hook here. And when your brain realizes based on the question, the human business, that you're basically saying, okay, brain, help me think of ideas where I can go for something. And basically I'm not going to give up no matter how hard it is. Then your brain is like, whoa, okay. 
because your brain realizes that you're not in fantasy land anymore. You're not in the whole, ooh, let's get excited, and then it's gonna, it's gonna dip, and then I'm gonna quit because it was unexpected. Uh, you're in the, okay, it's gonna be shit, and I'm gonna continue no matter how shit it is, no matter how long it takes. Um, so when you start thinking like that, uh, the it, it really helps clarify your mind. So if you already have a list of goals or values or things that you're pursuing or thinking about pursuing, and you're just unclear about what you should be going for, uh, use these negative questions to help weed out the fake goals, which are basically the ones that you're going to start and give up on, and the real goals, which are the ones that you'd willingly step into the fire for. for. Again, goals that you'd literally be willing to like, yeah, I'm going to go through fire and I'm going to let myself burn to make this work. I'm willing to go through the shit you know, to suffer, to go through immense risk or emotional turbulence to make this work. And when you see that chasm of fire and you're like, yeah, this is it. Like, this is a goal where I'm literally willing to go through the fire, not above it, not around it, not to extinguish it and then go. No, I'm literally willing to step right into that bitch, get burnt and come out the other side. If you're willing to do that, the odds of you following through on the goal are extremely high. And, you know, people say it's about willpower and discipline. To some extent, that's true. But you also need to find the right goal that would even prom- prompt you to, to desire that willpower, to desire that discipline. So people think that it starts with discipline. It doesn't. It starts with finding a goal that's so important to you that you'd be willing to to create the discipline for. Because again, I've done really crazy shit in my life, especially stuff in sports that involved a lot of discipline. But the moment that I came upon a challenge that I wasn't 100% closed on, like I wasn't like, okay, this goal is gonna get done no matter what, then all the discipline would just go out the window. Because basically, um, as long as you have a way out, you're never gonna be uh, able to go through the fire because And again, you can refer to the previous video I made about this exact topic. As long as you have any way out, you're basically going to take the easier path out in the long run. So I hope this video helps clarify how you should be setting goals and just the the virtues of negativity. I think people really underappreciate negativity and how helpful it could be in cutting through bullshit, knowing who you are, knowing what you want. And um, really, we should all be striving to um, think more negatively on a conscious level and think more positively on an unconscious level. So most people think uh, negatively unconsciously, meaning most of their thoughts on a day-to-day basis are really, really stupid and bad. And they think positively consciously, which is not the good thing or the right thing to do because your logic should be negative while your inner state, your confidence should be positive. Uh, Again, hope that makes sense. Let me know if you have any questions on the topic or you need any specific uh, uh, example that you're going through that you'd like me to help clarify. Uh, If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, uh, please do so now because I will be uploading more of these kind of videos. So if you got value from it, definitely uh, like it, share it with people, tag people, uh, send it on WhatsApp. It helps it a lot. Um, And again, thank you for watching and I'll hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.